Elon Musk sees it, humanity is either on the cusp of its greatest revolution or risking its own annihilation. But now, after 16 years of work through his rocket company, SpaceX, Musk's rosier scenario may have finally started to take root. This video will be continuing from where we left off in part one of the video, SpaceX Killer. If you haven't watched part one, be sure to check it out. We left the link in the description below. Here's how the competition in the new space race stacks up. Orbital ATK Orbital Sciences Corporation, commonly referred to as Orbital, was an American company specializing in the design, manufacture, and launch of small and medium-class space and rocket systems for commercial, military, and other government customers. Based in Chandler, Arizona, the Flight Systems Group includes the Pegasus, Minotaur, and Antares launch vehicles, as well as solid propulsion and aerostructures programs. The company also operates a Lockheed L-1011 TriStar wide-body jetliner, which is named Stargazer and is used to air-launch Pegasus rockets carrying payloads into space. The cost per launch of a Pegasus is 40 million US dollars, with a payload capacity of 443 kilograms, or 977 pounds to the lower Earth orbit. Orbital also produces the Cygnus spacecraft, which delivers cargo to the International Space Station, or ISS for short. It has a payload capacity of 3,500 kilograms, or 7,700 pounds, to lower Earth orbit. In 2008, Orbital Sciences was awarded eight missions under CRS-1 to transport cargo to the ISS. Orbital Sciences started delivering cargo to the ISS in 2013 using the Cygnus spacecraft atop the Antares rocket. After an Antares exploded, Orbital bought a ride on a more powerful Atlas V from ULA, and it was able to fulfill its original obligations to NASA by Mission 7. In 2014, Orbital merged with Alliant Tech Systems to create a new company called Orbital ATK Incorporated. Then, in 2018, the FTC announced that it has cleared Northrop Grumman's $7.8 billion purchase of defense and space contractor Orbital ATK. The merger is coming to fruition as both companies move to increase their NASA and military space businesses. Orbital ATK, now with the backing of Northrop Grumman, unveiled the new intermediate to heavy lift rocket that was designed deliberately to compete against SpaceX. Sierra Nevada Corporation SNC is now developing an orbital spacecraft called the Dream Chaser. Dream Chaser Space System is a planned human-rated version designed to carry two to seven people and cargo to orbital destinations such as the International Space Station. Although it could use any suitable launch vehicle, it is currently planned to be launched on a human-rated Atlas V-412 rocket. The cargo variant of the SNC Dream Chaser is called the Dream Chaser Cargo System. Featuring an expandable cargo portion containing solar panels, the cargo version of the spacecraft will be capable of returning 1,750 kilograms, or 3,860 pounds. In December 2014, Sierra Nevada proposed Dream Chaser for the commercial resupply missions. NASA committed to purchasing a minimum of six resupply missions to the ISS from Sierra Nevada. Aerojet Rocket Dine Aerojet Rocketdyne is an American rocket and missile propulsion manufacturer. Aerojet Rocketdyne was formed in 2013 when Aerojet and Rocketdyne were merged, forming Aerojet Rocketdyne. Though the company is not in direct competition with SpaceX, it does provide and manufacture rockets and propulsion systems to SpaceX's competitors. Aerojet Rocketdyne has powered more than 1,600 rocket launches since the inception of the U.S. space program, including the iconic Apollo mission that landed the first humans on the moon. Their space shuttle engines helped successfully launch crew and cargo into orbit 135 times, a flawless record of success. The RS-25, developed by Aerojet Rocketdyne, is the world's most reliable rocket booster engine. For three decades, these liquid hydrogen, liquid oxygen engines powered humans and payloads on all 135 space shuttle flights. Vector Space Systems Before Elon Musk started SpaceX, he held a series of meetings in Los Angeles and Silicon Valley, asking experts in the field for ideas on what a new age rocket company should look like. A handful of people advising Musk urged him to make small, cheap rockets that would bring the cost of getting something into orbit down to $5 million, from the going rate of about $100 million. 
In the years that followed, Space Exploration Technologies Corps did manage to lower launch prices drastically, but it stuck to making bigger spaceships instead of pursuing the radical approach that some of Musk's advisors desired. Vector Space Systems is led by former SpaceX exec Jim Cantrell. They have some radical plans. Vector's goal is to make a $1.5 million rocket that can carry small satellites into orbit. It expects to conduct 100 launches per year, a figure that would match the annual capacity of the entire aerospace industry. To help meet this goal, Vector raised $21 million from some of Silicon Valley's largest venture capital firms. While Elon made space safe for investors, he did not fix the launch problem. We are making the rockets as simple as they can be made, building them like sausages and launching by the hundreds. The rockets Vector has started building in a factory in Tucson, Arizona are tiny compared with the Falcon 9s. While the Falcon 9 rocket, which stands 230 feet tall and can take 50,000 pounds or 22,000 kilograms of gear to lower Earth orbit or ferry supplies to the International Space Station for about $60 million a pop, about a fifth of what its rival United Launch Alliance LLC charges, the Vector R stands at just 42 feet high and can take only 132 pounds, or around 60 kilograms of stuff to orbit at a cost of $1.5 million per flight. This means Vector cannot address the bulk of the launch market, which centers on sending satellites that weigh thousands of pounds up for commercial and government customers. Vector, though, is betting on the coming wave of smaller, cheaper satellites known as CubeSats to be the core of its business. Planet Labs Incorporated, a startup in San Francisco, is the best-known CubeSat maker. These devices are about the size of a shoebox and have just started becoming popular in recent years as improvements in electronics and software have made it possible to shrink satellites drastically. Rocket Lab Rocket Lab develops and launches advanced rocket technology to provide rapid and repeatable access to orbit for small satellites. The company develops lightweight, cost-effective commercial rocket launch services. The Electron program was founded on the premise that small payloads such as CubeSats require dedicated small launch vehicles and flexibility not currently offered by traditional rocket systems. The lightweight Electron rocket is Rocket Lab's first launch vehicle and is explicitly designed to service the small satellite market with dedicated high-frequency launch opportunities. Electron is designed to deliver payloads of 150 kilograms or 330 pounds to a 500 kilometer or 310 mile sun synchronous orbit. The Electron test program began in May 2017 with commercial flights announced by the company. Launching from Mahia Peninsula, New Zealand, the rocket's test flights took place on May 25, 2017 and January 21, 2018, while its first commercial flight, originally scheduled for June 27, 2018, was scrubbed for a future date. Vector and Rocket Lab has entered a suddenly crowded field. Several rocket launch companies have appeared in the U.S. and overseas to service ferries for small satellites. The most successful to date is Rocket Lab, which just completed its first test launch for New Zealand. Its rockets can carry more weight than Vector's and cost $5.7 million per flight. The top performers in the launch business, like SpaceX and Europe's Ariane Space SA, conduct about one liftoff per month. Both Rocket Lab and Vector want to ratchet up this cadence. We think the market will be on the order of 400 to 500 launches a year. There is room for four or five space launch providers, said Cantrell, a former SpaceX executive. The global nanosatellite and microsatellite market size was estimated at 991.4 million US dollars in 2016. The low manufacturing costs associated with nano and microsatellites is expected to drive the industry growth over the forecast period. These satellites have become more attractive than conventional satellites to serve the various needs of countries in accessing space missions. The world market for nanosatellite and microsatellite is anticipated to grow to 2.2 billion US dollars by 2024, thereby expanding at a growth rate of 12.1% CAGR, compounded annual growth rate, from the year 2016 to 2024. Rocket companies run notoriously behind schedule, and that launch date is very aggressive for such a young company. The aerospace industry is divided on how successful these small rockets will be. The price per pound on the large rockets from SpaceX and others is still more economical. But it's the flexibility of requesting a launch almost like you'd order something on Amazon.com that could end up being more attractive than pure cost. The lower end of the market will be more important than most people realize. 
Moore's Law is allowing you to make more capable things smaller and smaller, and I think the low-end rockets will hit the sweet spot. Thumbs if you liked it, subs if you loved it. See you guys next time. <laughs>